Good evening. This is Dr. John Bennett broadcasting from Miami. Tonight we have another in the series, ed, educational series of Parkinsonism uh, headed by Dr. Abdul Rana. He's a world-renowned Parkinsonism educator and neurologist from Toronto, Canada. We're also joined by panelist Ben Malpuri, Mulpuri, MD, a doctor from Saginaw, Michigan. Uh, and I'm glad to see both you guys from the cold north. Uh, <laughs> welcome. Not cold anymore. Uh, uh, not cold. Well, we'll, we'll first uh, introduce Ben, and you can talk a little bit about yourself and why you're here tonight. Yep, uh, I'm Dr. Van Mulpuri, MD, physician, F internal medicine uh, from Saginaw, Michigan, and uh, I also did uh, executive MBA followed by health, uh, health information technology. And uh, recently, I met Dr. Bennett, and uh, uh, looks like he had the same, uh, you know, um, uh, I mean, uh, goal and uh, desire to achieve something. Uh, for the internal, I mean, for the medicine through internet, uh, which can help improve the health care in general, especially online. And uh, I'm I'm very glad to be with uh, here with Dr. Anna uh, and to attend this uh, Parkinson's uh, conference hangout. I mean, very good, Ben. Welcome, and Ben uh, will be part of the team hopefully, and be doing shows by himself with Dr. Rana. And welcome back, Dr. Rana. Thank you, Dr. Bennett. Thank you, Ben. Yeah, thank you. Nice meeting both of you. Yep. Uh, yeah, we had, we had a little hiatus. We're going to restart. And tonight, <laughs> uh, tonight uh, the topic is going to be vascular Parkinsonism and Parkinson's disease. Uh, I'll start off with the first question, Dr. Rana. What causes vascular Parkinsonism? Uh, small stroke, multiple small strokes in the certain parts of brain, such as basal ganglia or subcortical areas of uh, cerebral hemispheres, they cause uh, symptoms similar to Parkinsonism, which is referred as vascular Parkinsonism. And these uh, small strokes uh, are usually multiple, and they could be asymptomatic. Uh, like patients may not have a clear onset of uh, symptoms, which are commonly known as uh, stroke symptoms. Uh, and uh, uh, some patients may not be aware of any of uh, these uh, small infarcts or stroke, which has, uh, which might have happened over time. Very good. What is the common presentation of vascular Parkinsonism? Uh, these patients are commonly referred by their family physicians to the neurologist for gait okay. problems. They have trouble with uh, walking. Uh, maintaining their balance, uh, and when you examine them, they, they have a short stride, and and uh, they have uh, uh, they have a shuffle, which is a typical uh, shuffling gait seen in Parkinson's. And uh, many of these patients have a freezing of gait as well, uh, which is a temporary arrest of the mobility when patients are uh, either starting to walk, or sometime when they're turning, or in the middle of uh, uh, going through a narrow space or reaching a destination. So these patients are uh, usually, uh, they are quite slow. If you examine them, uh, the repetitive movements in their legs as compared to their arms. So their leg agility movements are much slower as compared to their arms. Uh, so these patients, uh, uh, they have uh, stiffness in the legs, rigidity, as well as postural instability. And uh, they have significant cerebrovascular disease. Which is, called, uh, which is quite obvious uh, on MRI and sometimes on CAT scan as well. And uh, uh, you can sometimes see the focal uh, signs and symptoms as well in these patients which are uh, seen in stroke patients. Mm -hmm. so what, what is it like uh, on the, at the onset of this vascular Parkinsonism? Uh, the onset of these symptoms uh, is usually gradual. It uh, may be related to uh, the infarcts or strokes uh, near the areas which increase the motor uh, output of uh, basal ganglia, uh, such as globus pallidus externa or substantia nigra pars compacta, or in the areas which decrease the thalamocortical drive directly, such as the ventral nucleus of thalamus or uh, large frontal lobe infarcts. Uh, the onset of uh, Parkinsonian symptoms in these patients uh, is uh, slow and it progresses gradually and uh, 
they may start with uh, uh, trouble with their balance and the gait and slowly uh, they become much more slower and then freezing is noticed in these patients and uh, when you examine their upper extremities uh, they, they seem quite good they, may, they might not have uh, uh, the significant rigidity in their upper extremities or uh, significant rigidity in their neck uh, so uh, some of the experts do uh, suggest that uh, if there are signs and symptoms uh, of Parkinsonism a contralateral to the stroke within one year that could be suggestive of vascular Parkinsonism and also a gradual onset of bilateral Parkinsonism as compared to when you see a patient uh, with typical Parkinson disease, the idiopathic Parkinson disease, the onset is gradual but it is on one side. Usually it starts on one side and sometimes if you see them a little bit late and symptoms are on both sides, it's quite asymmetrical. So the symptoms are uh, uh, much more prominent on one side and uh, about two-thirds of patients or 70% of the patients may have a resting tremor in idiopathic Parkinson's disease. But in these patients, there is a gradual onset of bilateral Parkinsonism and they have extensive uh, subcortical white matter changes or ischemic disease uh, and uh, they would be early on in the course of the disease have uh, shuffling gait, uh, they might have cognitive dysfunction as well. So these symptoms uh, uh, by some experts are suggestive, uh, are suggested to be supportive of the diagnosis of vascular Parkinsonism. So, uh, uh, Dr. Rana, I have a question. Uh, you Go mentioned ahead. it is gradual, right? Right. But, but in, in case, you know, if it is vascular origin, I mean, like stroke patients, it just happens all of a sudden. Like, you know, they, they get weakened and or paralysis or, right. you know, and affected or the other side. But the, I mean, you mentioned because this is basically because of, we are talking about vascular dementia, and uh, you mentioned gradual. Uh, I wonder how how can we uh, you know you know know whether it is due to st um, lacunar strokes or small strokes or is it due to atherosclerotic uh, ischemia of the area? Right. So these patients, uh, when when you uh, when you image these patients, so they have uh, uh, usually. In most cases, they have small strokes, the lacunar strokes, mm -hmm. which are usually asymptomatic. It's a small vessel disease, and uh, these um, uh, lacunar strokes over time they develop, and uh, uh, this uh, ischemic disease progresses. And uh, in certain areas of brain, in basal ganglia or subcortical areas, mm -hmm. uh, these uh, uh, these infox uh, uh, keep on happening over time, and a mm -hmm. time comes when patients. Uh, uh, develop the symptoms uh, involving the lower body or the legs uh, mm -hmm. with uh, respect to trouble walking, uh, their gait being uh, shuffled or uh, not being able to maintain their balance and freezing. Mm -hmm. As I said before, sometimes the large infarcts, like the large frontal lobe infarct or a large basal ganglia infarct, if it happens and within one year, um, a proposed uh, time frame by some experts, if uh, patients develop uh, uh, the symptoms of Parkinsonism on that side, which uh, was contralateral to the stroke, then still it's considered. Uh, mm -hmm. So still uh, uh, these symptoms would uh, develop uh, slowly. The stroke symptoms, like uh, uh, because they happen so suddenly, uh, once mm -hmm. they have a stroke, they get paralyzed on the other side. Right. So when you examine them, they, they are very, they are so weak that uh, you will not be, and they have uh, upper motor neuron symptoms. Uh, right. they, uh, they have. Uh, pyramidal symptoms. So you can, at that time, in the acute phase, you can't uh, determine uh, mm -hmm. whether they have any any extra pyramidal symptoms because they're so weak, they have uh, a spasticity on that side. So mm -hmm. these symptoms, uh, as their uh, uh, weakness or stroke-related symptoms would get better a bit, then mm -hmm. you realize that they also have the extra pyramidal symptoms. Okay, thank you. So, so I mean, uh, so if you control blood pressure and uh, if you can prevent the, the uh, atherosclerotic, uh, you know, the promoters, can we control this, this Parkinsonism, this type of vascular Parkinsonism? Uh, I think any vascular, um, any vascular disease or any vascular phenomena, uh, of course, uh, it could be uh, the chances of this could be decreased if you mm -hmm. Uh, would control any risk factors leading to this. But we can't say in particular to this, 
where we can control vascular Parkinsonism by controlling the high blood pressure or by controlling the, the cholesterol level or diabetes because you need to do a lot of studies uh, right, to see right. patients uh, uh, who develop vascular Parkinsonism and uh, they had uh, no control of these uh, vascular risk factors versus a group mm -hmm. of patients you need to follow who you controlled and then you compare uh, the incidence uh, of vascular Parkinsonism in, in these patients because it's such a uh, small group of patients. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Rana. Uh, Dr. Rana, going back to your lacunar infarct, uh, what imaging study do you use? A CAT scan or MRI to diagnose those? Uh, yeah, MRI is uh, the is the modality of choice in this okay. because CAT scan may not, uh, may not pick it up certain images. Right? Okay, very good. Okay, wh um, what is the ter what is the term? What does it mean when you hear the term lower body Parkinsonism? Uh, by lower body Parkinsonism, we refer that uh, patients uh, have more symptoms uh, uh, related to their legs. So their walking is affected, their speed of uh, walking is slow, their stride is short, and uh, they have trouble turning, uh, freezing of gait, uh, and also the leg agility movements would be slower. But when you examine these patients uh, in a regular encounter and check their uh, a repetitive motion of the repetitive movements of their hands, such as finger tapping or turning of hands or opening and closing of hands. So these movements, when you compare to their lower extremities, are quite good. Uh, whereas when you uh, check their toe tapping or heel tapping and their gait uh, is uh, much more effective. In case of uh, idiopathic Parkinson's disease, the freezing of gait does not happen in the beginning and also uh, the other gait uh, phenomena such as a shuffling of gait or uh, decreased stride and narrow base uh, may not happen uh, just at the onset. Usually their gait is quite good in the beginning and they have symptoms more uh, to uh, uh, symptoms more uh, in their upper extremities. So in idiopathic Parkinson's disease patients usually the, the classic uh, uh, onset is uh, um, starting on one side and uh, the first uh, uh, first uh, body part affected is an arm or a hand with a tremor or slowness or trouble with dexterity and for some time in the beginning of the course of the disease uh, their uh, leg agility movements are much much better in contrast to vascular Parkinsonism in which uh, your uh, hand movements would be much better and your leg agility movements uh, would be much more effective. So therefore, uh, it is referred to as lower body Parkinson's. Very good. Any questions, Ben? No. no. Okay. Yep. Okay, very good. Okay, Dr. Rana, thank you for coming back and restarting our educational series on Parkinsonism. All these shows can be seen at Parkinsonism.tv and tomorrow night, I assume, we'll continue this series and uh, hopefully Ben can join us too. Thank okay. you. Thank you Dr. Bennett and thank you Ben. Thank you. Uh, okay. Th thank good you Dr. Night. Anna. Thank you for presenting today. Good night gentlemen. Uh, good night.